Hi, everyone. I'm Stephen Briazano from the Piper Jaffray Biotech team. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, Haim Leibowitz, uh, President and CEO of Brainstorm Therapeutics, who's going to give us a couple brief uh, overview of the company, and then we'll dive into Q&A. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Good morning. So we have like five minutes to present and then Q&A. Thank you. Just a short overview on Brainstorm. It's a U.S. Israeli biotech company, uh, traded on the NASDAQ, 20 employees, <coughs> wonderful team, mostly of scientists and CMC. And we're developing a groundbreaking differentiated autologous stem cell treatment called Neuron for neurodegenerative diseases. Oh, I have it here. I didn't know. Um, R&D at clinical stage, we treated 70 ALS patients in three clinical trials in top-tier U.S. and Israeli medical centers. I'm going to pick only a few slides so we can have time for questions and answers, which is the... So this is just a word on the CMC. Uh, since we are focused on autologous stem cells, and we now know that we have a strong elevation of the CAR T-cell industry, and uh, they lend us a lot of credibility when it comes to autologous treatments. And uh, the truth is we fine-tuned our treatments, and it's uh, as close as you get, you can get to an allogeneic. We believe that autologous stem cells are the right product, specifically for neurodegenerative diseases. So what we know to do today is we get the patient into the clinic, we do a bone marrow aspiration, we send them home, and we cryopreserve the cells. We put up his own product, so we're able this, will, this is able to provide neuron for two years of treatment for the patient, only once a bone marrow aspiration. Then, whenever the doctor will order an injection, we need seven days defreeze, expansion, differentiation and expansion, and to re-inject. I think we started off with 45 days processes, down to seven days, validated, and that's what we will be using for our phase three trial. And this is a very impressive, it's a know-how, of course, of expanding to hundreds of millions of cells, and the differentiation process is unique, and we call it neuron. This is the neuron technology. What's very important is you see the comparison of the mesenchymal cells to neuron, which is the mesenchymal neurotrophic cells. The blue shows the regular mesenchymal cells, the red is neuron, and these are from actual patients from our open-label trials in Israel. And we show the different neurotrophic factors, GDNF, BDNF, VGF, and HEF. And I would like you to see two interesting uh, outcomes. First, of course, mesenchymal cells secrete all of these neurotrophic factors, but they're very, at a very low grade. And neuron, of course, dramatically higher. But what you also see from patient to patient, it will differ. It's a biological product. And therefore, as you will see later, the respond from patient to patient is different, how long the response is from a single dose, and how much, how, which patients will need every two months, every four months, six months, is still to be figured out. But what we did prove already in our double-blinded open-label trial, the uh, double-blinded placebo trial in the States, randomized, that it has an effect. Uh, some patients four to eight weeks, and many other patients 12 to 16 weeks. Of course, in the next trial, we are aiming to do multi-dose trial of every two months, so we have a comparison. So we, have, we are very fortunate to have the best centers, the best KOLs as our PI, PIs, Professor Bob Brown, Meredith Kowitz, and Anthony Windebank from UMass and Mass General Hospital and Mayo Clinic. And with the manufacturing for Massachusetts in the previous trial was Dana-Farber and Mayo Clinic. The phase two studies, we had 48 patients, three to one randomization, and we had a screening running period of three months, and then bone marrow aspiration, transplantation visit five, where we did CSF collections, and we compared it to CSF lumbar th uh, visit six, two weeks after, and then of course the study follow up every month until 24 weeks after. Primary endpoint was safety, secondary endpoint was ALS, RSR, and exploratory predefined also the CSF biomarkers. I'm skipping on the, okay, so this is, 
if you look at the mean change in slope, even though we pre-specified uh, responder analysis, we think it's more accurate, but the industry is very familiar with mean slope for usually for oncology, it's very common. Respond analysis, ALS has this issue that the patient to patient are very variable. So the respond analysis is more accurate than even at our end of phase two meeting with the FDA. The FDA agreed our primary endpoint for the next trial would be a responder analysis. But even in the mean analysis, if you compare the pretreatment to after treatment two to four weeks after, you see a huge separation between the treated blue and the non-treated treatment red. In the responder analysis, uh, while well, everyone ex agrees that it's more accurate, the question is in ALS, what is a clinically meaningful benefit in ALS? And this is a paper that shows Neil's doctors say that 25% improvement in the slope is somewhat clinically meaningful. 50% improvement is very clinically meaningful. This was a mean change. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. So as you can see here, that far more people in the cell therapy group were responders along through the 24 weeks. And if you look at the 12 and 16 weeks, so it's very impressive. It's out. This were very surprising results to see such a long result from a single dose, such a long response. The same in the pre-specified group. This is, again, the mean analyst for the pre-specified group, excluding slow progressors, which in the next phase we, are not gonna, we look not to randomize these two patients. You will see, again, a very strong clinical effect. This is 1.5 absolute improvement in the LSFRSR score. It's a very high bar. I'm finishing the next slide. There are four, four, some more slides, but I will leave for question and answer. Yes? Okay. I'll speak loudly. Um, maybe just, you've run a couple of studies now. Who is the ideal patient for, for neuron uh, at this point? That's a very good question. So we believe that neuron is a platform for probably many neurodegenerative diseases. We were courageous and we were trying to bring a cure or treatment for probably the worst neurodegenerative disease, ALS. But in the preclinicals, we showed strong efficacy, even stronger efficacy for Parkinson, MS, progressive MS, uh, Alzheimer's, you name it. Uh, the, in, the, in this ALS population, we believe that, uh, based on the results we've seen until now, the 70 patients, that in, in excluding slow progressors, we will see a better readout at least, and maybe even a better biological response. And so, uh, in the phase three, what are some of the, the key similarities and differences between uh, the inclusion criteria endpoints between uh, the, two, the two studies? Yeah, so, as I said, this, the studies that we did are all sim very similar inclusion exclusion criteria. Uh, the only new exclusion criteria that will come up in the next phase would be excluding the very slow progressors, meaning those that progress less than 0 0.7 per month or less than two points over three months period. And just so you understand the comparison, uh, everyone is looking now at Endervan, which is not a cell therapy, for ALS, they showed while they did many trials, the first three failed, the fourth one was a successful. They have a statistically significant result in a big group, but they show only a benefit of 0 0.4 per month in the, in the LSFRSR score. And we show over that same, same period, based on a previous trial, not power to efficacy, a one point per month uh, over the four months, at least in the mean. And in the responder analysis, you see 1.5 absolute per month, which is a far higher dramatic improvement and very clinically meaningful. And maybe to look at the, the biomarkers, you see levels of VEGF, HDF, LIF increase. Um, is, there there any, go. is there any correlation to the, to the patients that respond strong? Very good question. So as we said, uh, the, the only issue that someone can have with our results, they are very robust, very strong, but it's a small population, 48 patients, three to one randomization. So the question is, maybe this is just a random result. And that's where the biomarkers really come and prove to, every, to all the naysayers and the cell therapy for neurodegenerative diseases, this is the method of action. If you look at the increase in these neurotrophic factors, VEGF, HEF, and LIF, which are very relevant, as you can see in the legends, to ALS, the dramatic increase in the treated patients, 
the neuron, this is the N26, compared to the placebo. It's almost like a QAQC test where it stays flat, there's no difference. And this is in the increase of the neurotrophic factors. And then to double that up, to couple that up, if you look at the decrease in the inflammatory factors. So again, the same thing, look at mainly, which is very relevant, most relevant from all these factors, MCP1, the thematic decrease in the treated patient versus the placebo stay flat, and the same as SDF1, which you maybe don't see in the slope, but it's a statistical significant decrease. And maybe just to, to talk asked about the correlation, we are about to publish papers on both uh, trials, so you can imagine that we don't want to compromise the paper. So we're not presenting too much details on this. We also probably have new biomarkers for ALS based on these results, but we are patenting first, and therefore I'm a little bit stingy on the information of this. We'll be on the lookout for the p publication. Maybe, maybe to switch to the procedure, what is the procedure like? How involved is it? And what is the, uh, the safety profile uh, been so far? Well, safety profile is a clean safety profile. Of course, there are adverse events for the treated patients versus the non-treated. So, of course, we don't give Coca-Cola to the patients. These are, these are cells, and it has an effect. But it's uh, all transient, and uh, we had a very wonderful DSMB uh, group uh, headed by Caroline Jackson, and uh, together with Dr. Bedlock and uh, Dr. David Schoenfeld, who's a statistician. So, all of them felt that this is a very clean safety profile, and we didn't have even one comment by the FDA and then the phase two meetings on the safety. Uh, any questions from the audience? Please. Um, maybe you touched on it before, but is there mechanistic rationale, <clears throat> excuse me, mechanistic rationale why the uh, subgroup without the slow progressors would have demonstrated greater benefit? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, we have a, with us our scientist here, Dr. Kern. He'll probably talk later on the panel. Maybe he'll touch that. But I will address it. I'm the non-scientific guy here. <clears throat> but we, between our wonderful PIs or, or KLs, there is debate. If it's only an issue of a readout or a biologic. And I'll give you a biologic rationale. The biologic rationale is that the slow progressors, their inflammatory part of the disease is slower. And we see a very strong, as you see in this uh, slide here, decrease in MCP1 and SDF1 in the treated patients. And therefore, probably the more progressed patients, that's where you see the bigger effect. But it's, it's debatable. We had a very strong debate with probably the best scientists in the field on this. No conclusion yet. And, and what does the, the rest of the year look like in, term of, in terms of news flow and what to be looking for from you guys? Okay, well, there's a lot of news flow coming up, but I can tell you what we announced already is that we are in the final phases of initiating phase three. We will be manufacturing for the U.S. sites in phase three in the City of Hope. We're starting tech transfer any day. We'll be announcing it any day. And uh, we have chosen a few additional sites, which we're going to be announcing soon also. We have a final protocol, final IB, finalizing the Zencom form, ICF. And we're hopefully to enroll the patients as we planned by the end of June, by the end of the half. Ultimately, how many sites do you envision uh, neuron? Six sites, 200 patients, one-to-one -one randomization. And commercially, potentially more sites, or do you think that's enough centers uh, to have experience with it? Well, we do not put on a press release this morning, so I'm thinking what I can answer. I'd rather not comment. Sure. Uh, any last questions from the audience? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.